morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Testing, testing. <laughs> Actually, no testing. It is on. I'm going to wait just a few more minutes. Let me know if you are here. Say good morning on this kind of cloudy, cloudy day. Um, so just getting nice and comfortable. Yes, let me know. Make sure, feel free in the comment section before I start if there's just, uh, you can't hear me or I need to speak louder, softer, <laughs> and somewhere in between. So, I'd love to get any feedback. Also, um, I know we are putting together a like poll. Um, so I uh, know Abby's working on that. And we would love any kind of feedback you might have in regards to yoga classes, um, what you like, what you would like more of, what you would like less of, um, any information for Valerie and I. Um, as we're trying to still get used to this online and live movement that's happening with yoga. And I think one of our biggest challenges is because it's usually just us teaching is to navigate <laughs> through that little tiny screen if uh, you can see us okay and hear us okay. And sometimes standing postures are hard because if we go into standing postures, then you lose like half of our body. <laughs> so we're still trying to, but if you want more standing poses, um, please let us know about that too. So really this is all about um, what's best for you all and um, what your needs are. And Valerie and I can accommodate and adapt. So um, my class today might be a little different. Um, I'm going to make it a bit of um, education slash yoga class. And so I want to do kind of the educational part now, and then we'll get into some yoga poses that um, embrace and um, work for what my focus is on today. And I'm always flipping my glasses on and off. <laughs> it's the problem of not seeing super well. But um, so what I want to talk about today is that we are obviously in summer. And we love summer. Most of us love summer. I definitely love summer. Um, and being in that warmth and the warmer temperatures and shedding some of those layers and getting out on the water and swimming and all those wonderful activities that summer time brings. Um, Ayurvedically, so Ayurveda, as we may have heard before, is like the sister science to yoga. So yoga is so much, so much. It's, it's bigger than I could even talk about right now. But um, Ayurveda really gets more into the elements. So fire, water, air, ether, and earth. And so right now, the summer is a fiery time, right? It's the fire. It's the heat of the sun. Um, it's longer days. It's more intense sun during the afternoon from 10 to 2. And so it's a wonderful time to, to enjoy that fire. But if you tend to already be fiery in nature, this is called like pitta, you may have heard that term before. And pitta is great. Being fiery is great. It's great if you have a good fire for your digestion. It's great if you have good fire where you can discern information with your senses, with your eyes. It's great for um, someone who's fiery tends to be very um, 
organized and has vision and is very straightforward and thinking and um, can pave the way. Like a lot of leaders tend to be very fiery. So those are wonderful qualities to have for sure. We also have to make sure we don't go too fiery, <laughs> that we don't go over the top. And you will know when that happens and it's natural for most of us in the summertime if it's really hot. Now we may not experience that so much here because the temperatures are really like so perfect, but in other parts of the country like Florida and Texas and Louisiana, um, where it's really humid and really hot, that can really aggravate the fire. But there are definitely times, I've been out on the tennis court where, um, it was like 94 and just beating down sun. When that happens, there you will become over fiery. So that might be where not only physically you're turning red, um, but you might get like kind of short, um, not short in size, but short in like your attitude um, you might get more critical, more impatient, um, like short fused and overheated. Your mind gets overheated. So you're maybe overthinking things. Um, you get angry. So all those like fiery emotions can come up when we are not in balance. Hopefully that makes some sense. So we are in that right now. Like it's easy for us to experience those if we are of a fiery nature. So it's important to kind of check in with yourself throughout the day. And if you are someone who tends to be more fiery, um, and you'll know again with the skin, the skin tends to be a little red, a little pink. You may have more like, um, blisters, like acne, breakouts, those are like physical indications of fire, um, other types of uh, fire imbalances would definitely be like having too much elimination and just like very snappish. I was in Charleston uh, this weekend and or this week and I noticed at about around 12, 30, 1 o'clock, which is the hottest time of the day. It was probably 95 or 96. I was super hangry, <laughs> and um, I could tell I was definitely really short-fused, like with my kids. And um, so it's important to be aware of that. It's important to know how to work with that, with your diet. So um, with when you exercise, so if you are fiery in nature, you definitely don't want to exercise during that peak time of like 10 to 2, 11 to 2, when it's really like the sun is beating down. Um, I put on some rose water spritz this morning um, because I've definitely been feeling fiery, um, drinking some warm, just temperature, room temperature water. Um, but I put some mint in it, infusing some mint and, um, lime, put some lime in there. So those are just a few things you can do. You can also, um, reduce caffeine, um, spicy foods right now. If you're fiery, then that's just creating more heat, more agitation, more aggravation in your body and your cells. So trying to stay more with like some um, cooling watermelon, cucumber, adding more of that, using more fennel, um, more coriander, more cumin, mint is great, coconut water. So just thinking of some of these things that can um, bring some of that coolness to balance some of that heat. Um, alcohol and fried food are definitely things to do, to not do, <laughs> or to do very, very, very mild amounts. Um, so today, 
we're going to do a practice that's going to be about uh, cooling breaths. And we're going to do a lot of different, like more twists and more opening the solar plexus. So the idea is you open to create some of that space um, uh, to bring in some cooler air and then the twists and also the compressing to kind of, it's almost like you're trying to push it out and you're trying to twist it out. So you're trying to be like, I'm going to squeeze out that heat. Okay. So when you do your yoga practice, be mindful. Doing it more in the morning is great. You don't want to overthink it. You don't want to be critical of how you're doing it or what it looks like. It's more about just easing into your practice, like 75% efforting, which means you're just not, um, your focus is more on just enjoying and flowing, okay? So anyway. So this is called kind of like a pitta reducing class. So first let's just shake out our legs for a moment just from sitting in that position. We're gonna bring our arms up overhead. So we're gonna inhale. So taking some nice inhales here. And then as you exhale, you're gonna to twist to the right. So just gentle, easy, Kind of inhale here, allow the spine to be long. Exhale, maybe twist a little deeper. And then inhale, come back up. Nice inhale, exhale. Let's do the other side. So it doesn't matter what side you start with, do the opposite side. Again, inhale, elongate the spine. Exhale and see if you can deepen into that twist a little bit more. You can bring your head back if you want. And let's do another two rounds. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, back to center. This time look up, chest up, eyes, head up. Come back to center and then exhale, twist to the right. Inhale. And exhale. Good back to center. If you'd like to sit back into Sukhasana or seated pose for a moment, I want to do a breath called Shitali, or it's kind of like a sipping breath. So this is a great one to do when you're feeling um, overheated, if you're starting to see those fiery emotions coming up. If you're starting to feel like that impatience and that anger and just that like snapping. So bring your hands onto your knees and then you're going to curl your tongue and stick your tongue out just a little bit. So if you can't curl your tongue, then you're just going to try to bring the tongue up a little bit more the roof of the mouth, not touching the roof of the mouth, but just kind of up a little bit more so you can still create this current that's going to go in from the external and the internal. So play with that a few moments. But what we're going to do is now go ahead and soften or close your eyes. And you're going to stick out your tongue just slightly. Curl the tongue as much as you can. Don't overdo it or don't try too hard. And then you're going to take a nice inhale. So make it slow, like a slow inhale and feel the coolness of the outside air. And then you're bringing it down into, past the throat, to the heart. Then you're gonna close your mouth and exhale out through the nose. So let's do that again. You're going to curl the tongue, inhale, Slow sips. So 
close the mouth. Exhale through the nose. So think of just bringing in that cooling breath to pacify. We'll try that again. Let's do a few more rounds. Inhale. Nice and slow. Close the mouth. Exhale out the nose. Inhale. Open the mouth, curl the tongue, inhale, nice and slow. Close the mouth. Exhale out the nose. Two more rounds. Open the mouth, curl the tongue. Nice, slow, cooling breath in. Close the mouth, exhale out the nose. Last one, open the mouth, curl the tongue, inhale. Close the mouth, and exhale. I hope you feel better. <laughs> You're probably fine. This is definitely one for me. So the next thing we're going to do is you're going to take your right leg and you're going to angle it out. See if I'm going to step back a little bit more so you can see the full picture. My own little camera person here. Hopefully you can see that better. So we can take that right leg out and you're going to bring that left knee inward and kind of brace it close to the inner thigh. We're going to bring our arm up. So let me show you what we're going to do. So we're going to bring our arms up. You're going to kind of like twist your body a little bit towards that leg. So you'll exhale as you come towards that leg. And then we're going to bring this arm behind you. Now, and you can open up this way. So you can open up this way if you want, or you can open up this way. So the idea is we're opening and expanding and lengthening our fire center. So we'll do a few rounds on that side. So see what feels best, or you might want to just do a few like this and then a few where you lift your hips up. So let's inhale. Exhale, bring your torso down towards your leg. Inhale, bring the arm up, the left arm, and then use that right arm to lift you up. I'm gonna hold here for a moment. Just breathe naturally, and then come back down. Try that again. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, bring that left arm back as a pillar and then lift up, look up, expand that rib cage and then come back down. Let's do one more on this side. Inhale, fold forward. Use that left arm, inhale, and expand, open up, and then release. Good. Bring both legs in front of you, shake it out. So just play with that a little bit. Play with that. When we do this next side, and again, see what feels more comfortable for you. Take your left leg now. We're going to bring that out at an angle. So say that's like 10 o'clock if you were on a, a very large clock. <laughs> um, allow this other foot to come in close to the thigh. 
so that it doesn't feel awkward when you come up onto it. One side might be tighter than the other. Don't worry about where you are when you're folding forward. Inhale, lift up. Turn the body slightly. Fold forward. Inhale, bring that right arm now behind you and lift up or just sit on your biscuits and open up. Let that heel anchor into the earth. Good. Let's do two more. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Lift up. Good. Last one. We're going to inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Bring that right arm back. Let that arm lift up. Open up the rib cage. Good. And release. If it feels comfortable for you, come on to your knees. If it doesn't, sit back in a comfortable seat. All we're going to do here is we're going to take a nice big inhale and then we're going to exhale out any of that heat. So feel free if you need to make some noise, but really get this like, feel like there's this big overheated furnace here and you're just really trying to expel that intense heat. So inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Good. So we're going to come on to um, into tabletop and just curl that right foot back behind you. Just get a nice stretch in the calf before we do some gentle down dogs. And bring that right foot now over to the opposite side and then look back at that heel. Bring the left leg back, press the heel into the earth, feel a nice stretch in the calf, and then bring that left leg over to the opposite side and compress that side body, and then bring that back. Come back onto your heels for a moment. So the idea is we're not really trying to do a lot of core work. We're not trying to do like boat pose or um, other poses like planks because that would be actually creating more heat. So we're trying to do things that are strengthening but not over strengthening. If you like to come up now, let's go into downward facing dog. So make this a nice gentle movement. So if you want to watch the sequence, I'll show you. We're going to go from here, then we're going to go onto our knees, we're going to go back into child's pose. We're going to kind of swoop into cobra. So you're going to come down like you've got rolling a peanut on your mat with your nose. And then come into cobra. It can be low cobra. So again, opening up the solar plexus. Good. Come back. Tabletop. Curl your toes under. We're going to press back into downward facing dog. Hold here. Back. Tabletop. 
into chair, um, child's pose. We're going to work our way into Cobra. So if this feels awkward for you, doing Cobra, you can just come back into tabletop and then work your way down onto the floor. Or again, it's like you're rolling a peanut with your nose. Bring the shoulders up, back, and down. Make it gentle, or you can come into Sphinx Pose which is also a great pose. Again, lengthening. Let's come into Sphinx Pose together. Breathe. Come on down. Press back into tabletop. Bring the right foot back. Stretch the calf. Bring the right foot over and look behind to see it. Come back to center. Curl the toes on the left side. So extending that left leg. Bring the left leg over to the opposite side. Look back. Come back to center. Come back and just take a moment before we go into another down dog to go ahead and just make some wrist circles. Come back onto the down dog position. Bend one knee. Bend the other knee. Tabletop in child's pose. Let's rest in child's pose for a moment. So get really comfortable in child's pose. If you can't put your forehead on the ground, that's okay. Just make a little fist, stack them, draw the tailbone down towards your feet, create some nice space in each vertebra. It's a great opportunity here to take an inhale through the nose and take some nice gentle exhales. It doesn't have to be forceful, but if you're feeling that there's any more heat, then allow that exhale to be longer. So like a nice inhale, exhale longer. Good. From child's pose, come back to tabletop, curl the toes into down dog, and then walk your feet up. So you can walk your feet up, just stand for a moment. Now you can't see my full body. <laughs> That's okay. Just take a moment to stand. I need a cameraman. Then we're going to bring our feet out about four feet. And we're going to start bringing our hands down. So again, if it's 
hard for you to touch the floor, you can use some books, you can use a block. See what feels best. If you want to take your feet out a little longer, good. Just take a moment here. Inhale, kind of lift up a little, but not overextending your neck. And then exhale, fold. Inhale, this time come onto your little tippy top fingers for a fuller extension. Chin a little bit closer to the chest. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold. This time, take your left hand. You're going to take your left hand, you're going to inhale, and we're going to bring that right arm up. So kind of bring it close to your body, and then extend. Stand up. Again, that twisting motion to help pacify that pitta nature to reduce the heat. Good. Slowly come back down. Bring that right arm forward and draw the hips back away from you just for a nice hamstring stretch. Good. Bring that right hand, replace the right hand. Bring the left hand as you inhale, create it close to your body and come up. Then go ahead, bring that left hand down about, I don't know, 10 inches or so in front of the other and draw the hips back. Good. Let's try that one more time. As long as you're comfortable. <laughs> Actually, if you want, let's just stretch a little bit here. Take a moment. So it's really just kind of going from side to side for a moment. So that feels intense on the hamstrings. This feels nice. So if we didn't move our feet at all, to come back, bring that left hand to center. If it's too much on your knees, put a little micro bend in there. So take some of the pressure off the back of the knee. Bring that right arm up. Inhale. And then exhale as you twist a little more. Bring that right arm forward. And then draw the hips back. Switch hand positions. Now, as you inhale, bring that left arm up. And then bring that left hand forward and draw the hips back. Good. Work your way to bringing your feet together. And then come back down onto your knees. If that feels comfortable. Excellent. Way to go. Hopefully you're feeling cooler, <laughs> more calm. Oh, I think we all need that right now. So we're going to start set going back now onto our backs. So get comfortable. I'm going to move a little closer so you can hear me. So begin to lie down. And bring that right knee into the chest, left leg extended out. Bring the arm up overhead, left knee in, right leg extended. Hands overhead, 
right knee in, left leg extended. Exhale as you press inward. Inhale as you lengthen. Exhale as you press the left knee in towards the chest. Inhale and just lengthen here. Let the arms be long, let the legs be long. Feeling that solar plexus area really opening up. Now bring your arms into a T position. You're going to bring your knees up to like 90 degrees. And then you're going to draw them over to the right. So draw the knees to the right and look over the left shoulder. Draw the knees back to center and just do a little massage right here. Almost like you're pedaling or making circles with your knees and just massaging the kidneys, the lower back. Not a lot of efforting. Come back to center. And then drop the knees over to the opposite side. That's such a good stretch. Oh, one of my favorites, always. So nice. Opening the chest. Releasing any unnecessary over the top fire. Good. Come back to center. Let's just do that one more set one more time. So like, let's just make whatever circles you want. You could just make big circles. You can make two little mini circles, be creative. <laughs> this is your paintbrush and your canvas. Then drop your knees over to the right. Take a nice exhale. Come back to center. No massage again. And then over to the opposite side. Come back to center. And then keep the left leg down and just bring the right leg up. You can use your hand to go behind the hamstring. Kind of like a gentle shoulder stand. <laughs> A one-legged gentle shoulder stand. Very gentle. Then release, bring that down. Take the left leg again if you can. Put your hand behind your hamstring. Drop the hip down away from the ceiling, bring it towards the floor. Release. Then find a really comfortable position for you. If you need to do any last little movement, something that needs a good stretch,
just take these next few moments if you want to do any little thing. Otherwise, if you are ready for that Shavasana, then that's a good time to do that too. And what I want you to do now as you are getting comfortable in this last pose of the day, Shavasana, and you're surrendering to the earth, you're surrendering to the gravity and just letting your body fully embrace the ground, is imagine that you are floating in this beautiful, beautiful aqua color Caribbean style water. Or maybe there's like an emerald green coast that you have been to before that you imagine. Either way, a blue or a green that you're just floating in. And really Embrace that feeling of floating. Embrace the letting go. Embrace the surrendering the body, the muscles, the bones. And one great tool for people who have a whole lot of fire is to be surrounded by blues and greens. So that's cooling, right? And very cooling when you can look up at the sky and it's blue or the ocean that's blue and green. It just calms this subtle energy that we have. It kind of takes all that tension and angst away. So as you're here, just floating in this Caribbean, beautiful, flowy, fluid ocean, or if a lake feels better to you, or even a pool, something that you are embracing this beautiful color from below in the water, and the beautiful color, tranquil color from the sky, almost like there is nothing separating the two. The ocean and the sky are all one. And allow whatever senses that come, maybe it's the salt water or a gentle breeze coming off of the coast, the sounds of seagulls, any tension, any tightness is going, dissipating, leaving the body, leaving the mind. no noise, no distractions, it's you and the expansiveness of the ocean, expansiveness of the sky, Any parts of your body that may still feel like it's warm or heated, just bring your attention to there. 
and you feel that the ocean or the lake or the pool is just kind of wrapping itself around that part of your body. Maybe it's your belly that still feels hot or fiery. Then just like it's just allowing the water to just hold that, to cool the temperature. It's just flowing over your ankle or flowing over your shoulder. And I invite you to stay here. If you're called to just relax deeper into this experience. If the invitation of floating longer is resonating with you, then do so. Just be in that moment be in that visualization wholeheartedly. And I will just end with a nice ohm, which accelerates that expansiveness, that opens up the channels even more. Until the next time that I see you, I hope you have a blessed and wonderful day. Namaste.